Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how to create a fire and smoke effect inside of DaVinci Resolve 16 using the particle system. The end result is going to look something like this, where you can take any area of your screen, add fire to it, and then at the top of your fire it's going to transition off into a smoky black color, giving you both fire and smoke at the same time. So with this image selected, I'm going to go over to the Fusion tab of DaVinci Resolve. That's the fourth one now over from the left. So on the Fusion tab, we need to set up a few nodes in order to get the effect we were looking for. So to start things off, we are absolutely going to need a particle emitter. You can find that on the shortcuts bar right above the node editor. So I'll add that to the bottom left there, and we'll leave that alone for right now. Next I'm going to do right click and go to the Add Tool menu and Particles, where we will find, uh, let's see, Directional Force. And we're also going to want Particles and Turbulence. And then finally we're also going to want to add a Particle Renderer, which we can also find on the shortcuts bar. So I'm going to tie all of these together, so the Particle Emitter feeds into the Directional Force, which feeds into the Turbulence, which feeds into the Particle Render. And now we need to combine that with the initial media input uh, so that the particle render and the media input both feed into the output so we get the image and the particles in the same image. So I'm going to right click, add tool, composite, and merge. So now I want this media in to go to merge and I want the particle render to go to merge and then I want the merge to go to the media output. So with that set up, uh, we should be able to have the particles appear on screen with all of these forces and a turbulence, which is kind of to make it have a wavy effect like it's in the wind, all tied together in one single system. Most likely right now, it's going to be really hard to see the particles, even if you scrub through the timeline, because by default, it generates the particles as little points on the screen, which are almost invisible. So I'm going to click on Particle Emitter, and over in the Inspector, we want to go to the third tab here for Style, and we're going to want to change the style from Point to Blob. So blobs are kind of like points, but more of a circle, like if you do a paintbrush in Photoshop. And what's important about that is that you can control the size. So in the size controls, I'm going to start by bumping the size of these blobs way up. So while we're in the size controls, I'm also going to increase the size variance to make it a little bit interesting. So this will make it so that some of the blob spots will be bigger than others. So we may also want to add in some size to velocity here. So if we increase this, it'll make it so that the uh, faster particles are bigger. And uh, that made everything gigantic, so I probably want to lower down the base size and see how that looks. Uh, can probably go quite a bit smaller than that as well. And obviously these settings will have to play around with quite a bit in order to get exactly as we want. So actually, now that I think about it, um, let's just make the particles get smaller over the lifespan. I think that's easier to understand. So at the end of the life is on the right, so if you want it to get smaller, then take the right end and pull that down, and then make it bigger at the start of the lifespan. Doing that, we're going to need to increase the size again. So let's move on to color controls. So we're going to want to set a base color and then color over life. So these will kind of multiply together to get the exact color that it looks like at any point in time. But we're going to want to start with something like an orange or a bright vivid yellow. So let's set it for orange for right now. Uh, color variance, we may want some of that later too, which will just make it so that when it spawns the particles, they have a little bit of varying color. Uh, but let's do color over life because that is important here. So I'm going to click at the end of color over life and I'm going to change the color there to black, which means at the end of the lifespan, it's going to have that black smoke. And at the start, uh, we're probably looking more at a red color. So let's set it something like that for now. And then in the middle, I also added a third point where I had it kind of shift towards an orange. And I think that worked out pretty well. So we'll try that there for now. Next, let's go over to the next tab of the particle emitter where we can change the region on which the particles are spawning from. So right now it's set to a sphere, and you can see that in this circle where the particles are coming out of. But I'm going to change that to a bezier, uh, because what we can do with this fire pit is create a curve that goes around the southern side of the fire pit, and then all of the particles can come up from that, uh, which will work much better than a circle in this case. So I'm going to create a few points in here. Uh, you can see that these are direct lines, but we can make it a curve by dragging on these curve handles. And I'm going to try to match it to correspond with the fire pit edges. So next we need to create a curve over here on the right. 
And obviously you can see that the fire is going the wrong direction. So we can change that quite easily as well. If you go over to the controls tab, uh, there's velocity down here. Oh, actually, you know what? All of the velocity that exists right now is uh, coming from the P directional force. So I'm actually going to go over to uh, particle directional force, which is the second node here, left click on it, and change the direction from negative 90 to 90. So by doing that, it's going to make the velocity go up. So now it can kind of look like fire a little bit more. Um, but obviously that's way too much strength and probably the particles are lasting too long as well. Uh, let's change the lifespan of the particles first. So on particle emitter, I'm going to change the lifespan on the controls and I'm going to set that to 30. Uh, by doing that, we can actually see some of those black particles up there, how it's orange in the middle and red at the bottom. And next we need to dramatically decrease this directional force. So uh, what this force is doing is making it accelerate all of the particles as they go through their lifespan in the upwards direction. So towards the sky. And I'm going to change that to like 0 0.01, way, way lower. The reason for actually having this force is it's an acceleration rather than a flat velocity. So it will increase over time for the particles. Uh, rather than the particles moving at exactly the same speed always. So next I'm going back over to particle emitter and we're going to set some default velocity. If we actually hit uh, play in the timeline, you can see, you know, you got the turbulence going side to side, uh, but maybe this fire is way too tame for you as it stands right now. So I'll set a little bit of uh, just default flat velocity in the upwards direction. So 0 0.1 and uh, remember to make the angle 90 as well. So it's going upwards. Okay, 0 0.1 may have been too much here. So let's try 0 0.05. That's probably about right. Maybe 0 0.04. It's all up to you on how huge of a fire you're trying to generate. Uh, so we can leave that there. Next, we're going to want to add in some blur. So it's not so obvious that these are little dots that are spawning on the screen. Uh, also increasing the number of dots so that it can be a lot thicker and look more like an actual fire. And then to also add a glow, because fires obviously generate a lot of light, so you kind of want some glow lighting. So let's change the number of emitted particles from 10 to about 50 here. And that should fill up the area where you have the fire by a lot. Next, we actually want to go over to the particle render node. And we can add some 2D blur and 2D glow. So I'm going to add a little bit of blur here, but not too much. Something like 0 0.05 for right now. And the glow, we're going to pump that up quite a bit. So something around 0 0.5, 0 0.4 seems pretty good. Uh, the fire is currently too red for my taste. So I'm actually going to go back over to the color of the particle emitter. And let's shift this towards more like a yellow. We'll also change the color over life controls and uh, maybe make that kind of like a yellowy orange by default. Uh, that's looking a little bit nicer and maybe it gets a little bit more red over time. Not that much though. So if we make that very bright, um, that looks decent. Okay, so I'm going to hit play in the timeline and just kind of see how this looks right now. Probably needs more variation in the movement, I would say. So let's go to the controls of the particle emitter and uh, add some velocity variance. So because I want this to always be in the upwards direction to some degree, I'm not going to make the velocity variance higher than, than the default velocity. So I'll make this 0 0.03. That'll mean that the velocity will be somewhere between 0 0.01 and 0 0.07 arbitrary number as it initially spawns. So let's play that back and see how that looks now. Okay, so that's not too bad there. Um, it's kind of obvious that it's spawning from this curve down here at the bottom. So to make it a little less obvious where the spawn point is, I'm going to add just a tad of position variance. When the particles spawn, it won't always be at the same spot. Also, I noticed I accidentally completed the curve here. I meant this to actually be only three points down there, but I guess you can leave it as an oval as well. It is set to Bezier, right? Okay, yeah, yeah, it is. Um, so yeah, you can connect all those points together for kind of a circle. Originally, I intended it to just spawn from here, kind of like a curve, but it going all the way around doesn't actually look bad either. So I'll just leave it there for right now. Uh, let's hit play and take a look at that. It kind of needs a little bit more thickness at the start. So we can either add more emission particles or we can increase the size. Let's try increasing the size at the start and make it a little bit thicker. Okay, also gonna micro adjust the handles here. 
on the Bezier curve. And I don't want them to get that small over time, so I'm going to increase the size a little bit. I think what we need is some more blur. So I'm going back over to Particle Vendor here, and I'm going to add a little bit more blur. And yeah, that looks a little bit nicer. So another thing we can do is go over to the Turbulence node here and adjust the values. So uh, we might want a little bit more turbulence on the x-axis. And I'm thinking that over the duration of the effect, I want the wind to affect it more as the particles reach the sky. So I'm actually going to make the strength over the life favor at the end of its lifespan as the uh, smoke gets a little bit more exposed to the air directly rather than being close to the ground. And I'm going to lower the strength at the start. Um, let's see here. Okay, so let's play that back and see how that goes. So with the turbulence favoring the end of lifespan, you can see that it kind of waves further over to the left and to the right. As time goes on, I think I want to make that even more dramatic. So I'll increase the strength of the life towards the end, and possibly I'll increase the strength just in general. And that's giving it a little bit of a nice wave there. Okay, uh, so when these particles are spawning, I do want a little bit more to appear down here towards the bottom of the fire pit rather than being at the top. Let's just go ahead and recreate the curve again. I'm going to do a left click there, a left click in the middle, and a left click on the right. And now I'm going to adjust the right handle and the left handle with... And if you accidentally close the loop, just hit Control z there. And we've got to take this handle and drag it down there as well. Okay, and let's get those middle points a little bit more accurate. Yeah, and just play around with the handles a little bit until you get it to the shape you want it to be. Um, but yeah, that's looking a little bit better. It's filling up the fire pit more than it was before. So if we hit space now, um, it's actually pretty close to a fire effect. So let's see, is there anything else we might want? I think uh, I want a little bit more lifespan where the color is black so that the smoke particles last a little longer. So uh, we can do that by going back over to the color tab of the particle emitter go down to color over life controls and uh, we're going to left click somewhere in between the middle point and the right hand point to make another point in between and for that in between point I'm going to make it black so this will basically me mean that there is a period of time where it's just basically pure black uh, we might make it more like a gray though for right now and I might drag that over as well adjusting these points till the color looks right and maybe increase the lifespan? Maybe not, actually. Uh, let's go ahead and hit play and see how that looks. Okay, yeah, I think that's not bad at all. Let's uh, go to the edit tab and kind of have it render. Um, so this is how we have it in the new version. Uh, you could clean up a little bit more around the edges of that fireplace, making sure that particles won't spawn where they're not supposed to. Um, but compared to the original... Uh, okay, I think one thing's missing. Having a bit of alpha would be pretty cool here. Uh, because fire isn't totally solid, it should probably be a bit see-through. So I'm going to go over to the color tab one more time. And uh, in color, we can take the color control and set the alpha to something lower than 1.0. And this should allow you to be able to see through the fire. You may want to take the color over life controls and also reduce some of their alpha, especially towards the end. So I'll just drop that down a bit and see how that turns out. Does that look better? Yeah, I think you can kind of see the grass just a tad behind the fire now. And I think that actually looks pretty cool. So obviously this new fire is less rad than the original one, but really you can have your color burn whatever color you want. So actually, uh, the position variance seems to be causing more harm than good, so I'm just going to drop that down to zero there. And by having a position variance of zero, the particle should not be able to spawn uh, below this line at all. And because I moved the line closer to the edge of this inner circle of the fireplace, that's actually a good thing. So you just want to make sure that the line gets really close to the edge of the fireplace. And aside from that, that, that looks pretty good, I think. Um, maybe on the left side, we want to drag that over just a bit. And is the right side good? I think the right side's good. So there you go, original fire effect and uh, the current fire effect. I will say one difference here is that uh, there might be a little less turbulence here. So if you want it to be especially wavy in your effect, like this, make sure you add in some x-direction turbulence there. So if you want it to be a little bit wavier with your effect, even if that's not that realistic, 
Uh, make sure you just add in a little bit more X turbulence and you should be good to go. So that's going to be it for this video on how to create a fire and smoke effect inside of DaVinci Resolve 16. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. I've been Chris and I will see you guys in my future DaVinci Resolve 16 content.